That's the quarter line. Great Britain end of the line. Fox puts it in, takes it out. Ellis out to Devereaux. This could be a dangerous time for the Canterbury side. Mike Doreen is down a back play, Greg, getting treatment, so there's only 12 back in defence. Maya David in there with his centre partner, Andrew Vincent. Now it's McNamara. Back to Ellis. Good tackle over the top from Chris Neem coming in to ensure that the ball wasn't able to be get got away by uh, Kevin Ellis. Good defence. Lee Crooks out wide. One tackle to go. The set of six. They're still 10 metres from halfway. Fox, the little general. Doreen, after receiving some treatment, is up again. Tackled by Carl Fairbank. Rangiaho. 10 metres from halfway. Yeah, that's the sort of enthusiasm the big bloke's got to run with. Tonight is it? Now it's a penalty to Canterbury. Great Britain inside the five metres. looking for a spot down the blind side but Fox read that one pretty well Bergman this is out Neem gets it out to Hermanson getting into a pretty good position there right in front of the sticks 10 meters out switch of play Bergman and now to Nixon pops one over the top to nobody and it's going to roll into touch no they keep it alive there's a knock on in there however So they really just have to settle down a little bit. Yes, the Canterbury side have had some opportunities with good field position. They managed to catch the Great Britain side scrambling back in defence. But just handling in the difficult conditions has let them down. All right, Tom. Myers. Now he's 18 metres out from his own line. Put him down. It's been a very torrid match in the middle of the play the ball area, Greg. The fatigue factor will be um, will be something that will be a concern for both sides as time approaches towards the end of the half. And of course, Great Britain only have three fresh reserves. And he came to Christchurch with 16 players. Kelvin Skerritt, one of the reserves, couldn't find a seat on the plane. That's the halfway line. Ellis out to Crook, standing wide. Good ball onto the support. Second row, Michael Jackson. Steve Hampson. Gives it plenty of air. Atkinson takes the slippery ball pretty well inside his own 22. Played very strongly in the line red provincial series. Albert Atkinson, the opportunities that he was given to play for Canterbury, played very strongly as a player with a lot of potential. Rangi Aho. He's played strongly the big bloke tonight so far, hasn't he, Greg? Well, he's there the distance. Here's his propping partner, Ron Samanu, about five metres from halfway. Yeah, well, these are the sort of conditions that suit the big fellas. They can get some momentum going forward and get a quick play of the ball. They can have the defensive sides in all sorts of trouble. Well, Steve Hampson is back inside his own 22. Won't get away from Mike Doreen. Must have gone very close to selection in the first test side. Steve Hampson, he was outstanding against Auckland at Carlow Park last week and he started the game very strongly this evening. Alan Hunt plays it. Now it's McNamara, the loose forward. Played a season in the low grades for St George in Sydney last year. Fox, Alice. Now it's John Devereaux. Pushing off tackles. Good run from the centre. He's eight metres inside Canterbury Territory. It's been touched by Canterbury in the play of the ball, so that's the first tackle again for Great Britain. Yes, a lot of pressure now for the Canterbury team to absorb. 
the Great Britain side got field position, possession of the football and five tackles now to play with. On the quarter line, Morris Lindsay, the manager of the Great Britain team. Fairbank can't get the pass away, still on the quarter line. McNamara down the blind, there's a little grubber kick through. Still alive, New Love has it. The referee having a close look. Consulting his touch judge. And it's a try. Well, the referee made certain that it was a try by consulting the touch judge who said he didn't knock it on. So there's the first try of the match. Great Britain leading Canterbury by 6-2. A fumble from the Cantabrians, and Paul Newlove was there. Yes, and it's a measure of the referee's character and ability that he was prepared to consult his touch judge. We see on the line red replay from the kick through, Paul Love manages to secure, to secure the football. We see the ball there at dummy half. The ball goes wide to McNamara on the run. Puts in the little kick through in behind the Canterbury defence line. Number four, Paul Newlove comes through on the chase. The referee initially was unsighted and consults with the touch judge. Touchdown said that it was a fair try. A line red replay confirms it. Great Britain now ahead, six points to two. Derry Cox trying to convert. He loves try. That's a pretty good attempt right between the middle again. So it's eight points to two. You love the try scorer. It's been converted. Eight two. The tourists over Canterbury. misunderstanding there from the Great Britain forwards Dean Sampson not happy with himself this will be a Canterbury feed into the scrum and a chance for the locals to hit back Great Britain 8 Canterbury 2 Bergman having a dart on his own but the gap soon closes Nixon Setu Eight metres out. Nixon. Long ball out to Vincent. Andrew Vincent. Almost through the gap. Ten metres out. Canterbury have been in this position on many occasions in the first half where they haven't been able to convert it. of the Canterbury side in the 1992 season has been the performance of Maya David in the centres. He played very well for the Kiwi Colts against Papua New Guinea a couple of weeks ago and he was one of their strong performers in the line with Provincial Series. See the ball out from dummy half. The big centre puts his head down, charges through the tackle of Kevin Ellis and goes over. Unable to be stopped by the Great Britain defence and there were some big defenders in there as well. Paul Hume. Now we see again on the line red replay the quick play the ball from a centre partner Andrew Vincent. Mark Nixon, the captain, a dummy half, gives a great short ball out to Maya David, steps back into the play of the ball area, fights his way through three or four Great Britain tackles. That's a terrific try from the young centre. Maya David from the Papua Nui Club, 20 years of age, a former junior Kiwi. Important kick for Mike Cully. And he's hooked it around to the right. He doesn't miss too many that close to the post. So the score remains. Great Britain 8, Canterbury 6. Maya David's try was unconverted in a handy position too. So the score remains. Great Britain 8. Canterbury six. Lance Setu. Yes, good return of the football from Lance Setu. Three or four quick play the balls and good drives will allow the Canterbury side to go straight down the other end of the football field and put pressure on Great Britain. Rangiaho. Kelly. 
up over the halfway. Good run by the hooker. Stewart, Pongia and Tuta. Another regular Simon Angel under suspension. At the makeshift forward pack doing the job. Alan Hunt. Alan Hunt. He's got support with him. The St. Helens winger. Now, Great Britain with a chance. About 15 metres out from the line. Fox. Fairbank. Can't get the pass away. Now it's Crooks. Good tackle from Neem. Right around the legs. Fox. Brings Alice around. He's wrapped up. Two tackles to go. Eight metres out. They want it down the blind side. Out it goes to David Myers. He keeps it alive. One tackle to go as Devereaux plays it. Hume at dummy half. Fox, look for the grubber kick. It's been knocked dead. And so we'll have a drop out from the middle of the sticks. Yeah, very difficult time now for the Canterbury side having to absorb that sort of pressure. Great Britain again completed another set of six and it showed a lot of professionalism on the last tackle with the ball out. The Fox at first receiver put it into the end goal. The Canterbury side first to knock the ball dead. Now they've got to drop kick the ball out to Great Britain. Present them with another set of six tackles. Andrew Vincent. Very difficult for the Canterbury side to keep the Great Britain side out. Now they've picked up their level of enthusiasm. That's the quarter line. That's Sampson. Fox. Back inside it goes to Lee Crooks. He's 10 metres out. Great Britain leading eight points to six. It's a try apiece in the first half. Fairbank. He's only a half a metre out. Hume waits for it. Fox calling the shots again. Out it goes to Ellis. Great Britain. Look like the second row of Michael Jackson pulled down. Now there's the kick from Fox. Canterbury come away with it. They survived that onslaught. Fantastic effort from the Canterbury side. Again, they showed a lot of character to be able to keep the Great Britain side out. 12 tackles they had to defend against in their own quarter. And it's a really, it's a mark of the way the side has been performing all year under the skilled coaching of Fran Enicott, who's done a fine job. 20 metres out from their own line. Rangiaho. Good tackle around the legs. Copybook stuff from McNamara. Two tackles in a row from the Great Britain loose forward. Final tackle coming up. Vincent puts the boot to it. Hampson is back there. He brings Alan Hunt into it again. Got away from Bergman. Cully has him over the top. Very elusive runner, Alan Hunt from the St. Helens Club. Coached by Kiwi Mike McClellan. Played strongly on the two occasions that we've seen him on one world of sports so far in the midweek games of this tour. Devereaux. It's the halfway line. Fox. Fox comes away with it again out to Crooks on the blind side. Neem the tackler. Now it's Sampson. Fox kicking for David Myers, but it is in the touch. So it'll be a Canterbury feed into the scrum inside their own 22, about 10 metres out from their own line. Bergman puts it in. Takes it out for Canterbury. Little Phil Bergman. McNamara just manages to cling on. No Marcus and Bergman makes another 10 metres. Canterbury out of a bit of bother now. 
Setu. Maya David, the try scorer. He's five metres from halfway. Kelly waits for it. Neem to the halfway. Nixon, Vincent. Andrew Vincent. To Sabato, back to Vincent. That's the corner line. There's one tackle to go. Vincent looks to be injured there, but he gets up and plays it. Nixon, there's the kick, gives it a bit of air. Hampson is there. Oh, he's a champion fullback, Steve Hampson. He's a marvellous player in the year. So he takes a lot of courage to be able to get up in the face of a lot of pressure and take those balls cleanly. He's a professional, a true professional. The Great Britain side having a bit of trouble getting the footing and the mud patches. Hasn't uh, been raining today, but had plenty of rain in Christchurch over the past days. Carl Fairbank to play it. The half-time siren sounds, so one try apiece in the first half. But Great Britain go to the break with a lead of eight points to six. Second half underway. Now this is Hampson. Good tackle from Nixon. Some of the Great Britain players have changed their jerseys. Which helps the commentators. A lot of mud here at uh, the Addington Showgrounds tonight. This is Sampson. Yes, and I think both sides would have been disappointed at the half-time break that they haven't been able to finish off more of the opportunities that they've created for themselves. The Great Britain side, they'll be very keen to complete their sets of six and turn good field position into points for Canterbury. Well, well here's a chance out of line. New love, dangerous player in the open spaces. They've got one tackle to go on this set of six. Fox. Crooks. Ellis. And Fedu Taiwa knocks it on. Yes, good decision from referee Des O'Sullivan. There was a knock on from Fedu Taiwa. Pressure for the Canterbury side now. It's Great Britain to get the feet at the scrum. 20 metres out from the Canterbury goal line. We see on the line red replay, the last tackle. The ball being put on the end goal. Fedu Taiwa loses that ball forward. And the referee Des O'Sullivan correctly adjudicates. Scrum Great Britain feet. Ellis. Bit of a fumble from Devereaux, and Ellis knocks on now. So a messy start to the second half. A strong defence from Maya David, the Canterbury centre. Came out of the defensive line, made a ball and all hit on Kevin Ellis. Forces the turnover. Canterbury get a reprieve. Bergman puts it in for Canterbury. Takes it out. Nixon wants it down the blind. Tackled by his opposite number, yes. Ellis. Been very creative, Mark Nixon, tonight. Been a major threat for the Great Britain side on the edge of the play the ball area. Chris Neem wants it down the blind side, makes it to the halfway line. Two points the difference. Great Britain eight, Canterbury six. Hermanson. Yeah, they look very polished around the play the ball area. The Canterbury side block passes. Smart work from Michael Kelly at dummy half. Maya David pops it out to nobody, but Taylor goes back and cleans up. Manages to stay in the field of play. The halfway line. One tackle to go. Bergman just manages to get a hurried kick in. Now this is Steve McNamara. Great Britain loose forward. It's well tidied up by McNamara too. Took that ball in on the fingertips whilst he was moving backwards. Now good opportunity for the Great Britain side in the middle of the middle of the park. Fairbank. Fox puts it down. Kelly comes away with it. Both sides to stick with the starting 13s in the second half. No changes yet. Great Britain only had three fresh reserves because of the delay with the fog at Auckland Airport. The plane was overbooked and they could only bring 16 players. They left Kelvin Skerritt behind. Now this is Neem midway halfway in the quarter line. Great Britain end of the line. Frank Endicott, the Canterbury coach. He'd be disappointed that his side wasn't able to convert their possession into points in the first half. 
great competitor, Frank Endicott. He'll have the side well primed up for a good effort in the second half. So far tonight, it's been the story for the Canterbury side. They've had many opportunities. Here, the final pass from Vincent. Just put down. Canterbury were presented with a great opportunity there to get some points. But again, they had field position and couldn't convert it. For the Great Britain side now, they'll be very keen to get some momentum rolling forward. Some fast play the balls, get a roll on. Good kick on the end of the set and improve their field position. Michael Jackson. Twenty meters from halfway, McNamara. Steve McNamara. They put it down. New love couldn't hold it. Bergman comes away with it. Looked like a chance for a counter attack, but didn't go off. Ellis read it pretty well. Now it's Fetu Taiwa. Five meters inside Great Britain territory. Cully. Crooks has him. Nixon back inside to Rangiahu. Bergman. Neem. Chris Neem. Good run. He picks up Mark Nixon. One tackle to go. 18 metres out. Great Britain holding on to a two-point lead. Hermanson turning and the tackle pops it back out to Atkinson. Taylor has nowhere to go. Gets it back to Atkinson. He pops it up and Great Britain come away with it. It was yeah. a final tackle anyway. Again, it was a second set of six from the Canterbury side that they got caught in position of the ball. Coach Frank, in Frank Endicott won't be comfortable with the way that the Canterbury side's travelling at the moment. Sampson, wide at the ruck, the young prop. Quarter line. Great Britain ended the line. McNamara, a pretty strong game on attack. Steve McNamara. Yes, he's been very busy the whole loose forward. The conditions have been difficult. The big blokes have had difficulty getting momentum going forward. He's been very, made a big contribution for Great Britain tonight. Well, there's the clearing kick. And Atkinson picks it up 10 metres out from his own line. So now Canterbury have the work to do again. Still plenty of time for them, just two points to difference. Very professional side to Great Britain. We can hear them talking in back play, Greg. No penalties, move up. Very keen to compete in this game. Samanu. Hermanson. Final tackle coming up. Bergman. Nixon. They're spinning it wide. Kerrigan, forward pass. <laughs> Handover on the final tackle. David Myers having a run from the wing. Well, let's see what Great Britain can do with it now. Five tackles to do something. Devereaux makes it to the quarter line. Canterbury end of the field. Sampson charges onto it. Dean Sampson out of one. He's 11 metres out. Here in waits for it. Fox. Long pass. Jackson. Fairbank. Carl Fairbank trying to free the hands to keep it alive. He's held. Jackson waits for it. A dummy half out. It goes to Fox. He misses out one. Gets it over to Sampson. No, it's not. It's the fullback who passes it on to Allison. There's the try. Great Britain, good hands. They kept it alive. Yes, Ellis, been, the scorer. Yes, it's been very patient football from the Great Britain side. They came out in the second half and have been playing with a lot of enthusiasm, particularly on defence in the middle of the play-the-ball area. They got possession of the football. 
when uh, Canterbury's player made an indiscretion. We see on the line red replay. They go down the blind side on the fourth tackle. A long pass picks up the Wigan fullback, Steve Hampson. Puts a great inside ball to Kevin Ellis, teammate to go over in the tackle of Lance Sedu. Very good football, professional effort from the Great Britain side. We we'll see again the long ball from the halfback picks up. Steve Hampson gets on the outside of the Great Britain defender. Look for the inside ball to Kevin Ellis. There it is. Lance Sedu tries to make the ball an all tackle. Ellis gets the ball safely down for Great Britain. The try from Ellis was unconverted by Fox, so Great Britain are now leading by 12 points to six. Great Britain over Canterbury, 12 to six. Two tries to one. Alan Hunt in from the wing. There's McNamara. Replacement warming up for Great Britain, number 16, Graham Hallis, a 21-year-old from Hull, Hull Kingston Rovers. His teammates are on the quarter line. Canterbury end of the field. Just chipping away. Alice. New love. He finds Alan Hunt over on the far side. Hunt! What a try. Good work from Alan Hunt. 21-year-old from St. Helens. He scored 72 tries in three seasons for Saints. Yes, he's been a marvellous performer, Alan Hunt, and he's played very strongly in midweek matches with the Great Britain side. We see on the line red replay, nice step off the left foot from Paul Newlove, gets out of the tackle from Michael Cully, gives a nice long ball to his St. Helens winger, Alan Hunt, pushes out of a couple of tackles, scores very strongly in the corner. We see again the step from Paul Newlove, stands in the tackle of Michael Cully, offloads a nice ball to Alan Hunt calling for it. Puts, goes on the inside of Mike Doreen. Gets away from the tackle of Bill Bergman. Albert Atkinson tries to stop the big winger, but too strong. The sixth try on tour for Alan Hunt. Derek Fox, another difficult conversion attempt. Just away to the left. Great Britain now leading Canterbury 16 to 6. Yeah, the last three or four minutes have been the best part of the game for the Canterbury side. They've competed very well, managing to pin the Great Britain side deep in their own quarter and not make mistakes themselves with the football. If they can force a turnover from this set of six, they'll be in with a big chance to get some points on the board. Sampson to the quarter line. He looked for the support, there was no one there. Hunt, a try scorer again tonight. Tackle there by Jason Duff, who's just come on to replace Ron Simone, who's had an outstanding match for the Canterbury side. So this is a chance for Canterbury, a handover, 25 metres out. Setu. Cully throws the dummy. 20 metres out. Rudy David. Canterbury. They need two converted tries to pull this one out of the bank. Great Britain leading by 10 at the moment. Bergman set to. Petu Taiwa. Been intercepted. Paul Newlove. Chase from behind and pulled down by Mike Doreen. Alan Hunt looked like a shepherd. But the referee says play on. He's eight metres from halfway. Again, at the start of the match, it looked like um, a good performance from John Devereaux could force his way into the Great Britain test team. Maybe even Derek Fox, Derek Fox at halfback, which would mean that they'd move Edwards to stand off and um, Gary Schofield to the centres. And the hooker was also being looked at tonight, Paul Hume. So do you think any of these tourists have played their way into a, a test team? Yes, well, all of them, I believe, have played very strongly and will be considerations. It'll be very difficult for Coach Malcolm really to sort it out. But having said that, I don't think they'll be keen to make too many changes from the uh, first test side last week. And I think they'll be very keen to maintain some stability in the all-important play-the-ball area. 
Well, it looked like the first touch of the ball there for a replacement, Justice, Justin Wallace, and he made a mess of it in the mud patch. Welcome to Addington Showgrounds. Kevin Ellis, standoff from Warrington. Great Britain, three tries to one so far. Aston, the replacement halfback, Ellis. Twenty-five meters out. One area of the game for the Great Britain side has been superior tonight. It's been in the execution of the simple things. The dummy half runs, taking taking the ball forward, quick play of the balls and completing sets of six. Hume, he's ten meters out now. Yes, it's steady as she goes stuff from the tourists. Unbeaten in their midweek games throughout Papua New Guinea as we look at a drop goal from Joe Lydon. Chalk another one point up on the board. And so it's now 17 to 6. Great Britain leading Canterbury. And we're inside the last five minutes of the match. We saw on Sunday at Palmerston North. Kiwi replacement Daryl Halligan come on and drop a goal and we see Joe Light and pitched into the game 10 minutes ago. Calmly slots a drop goal, a valuable point to grab. From the kickoff, a little fumble, but it was knocked back from Hampson. Alan Hunt. He was a replacement on this tour for Jonathan Davies. Winded in the tackle. The referee asking for one of his teammates to take the ball and play it. Steve Hampson to play it. Mark Aston. Hunt still having trouble getting to his feet. Referee calling a halt to play now. The referee just asking both sides to steady things down a little bit. Aston. Links up with Paul Newlove. Newlove out of the couple. Alan Hunter's over there as well. The cover's good enough this time to stop the flying winger. He's 20 metres out. Great Britain. Looking for another try to seal the game. But they won't do it like that. In the touch on the ball. It's on the fourth tackle, so there's no handover. It'll be a scrum to where the kick was taken. It'll be a Canterbury feed. <laughs> Phil Bergman. Canterbury halfback, one of the stars of the Lionbird National Championship this year. And he's been well marked tonight. Mark Dixon, midway, halfway in the quarter line. Said he's still running strong. So is this man, Chris Neem, up over the halfway line. Great Britain have it well and truly wrapped up 17 to 6 as the siren sounds. Last draw of the dice for Canterbury. And Steve Hampson is back there. And it's all over at the Addington Showgrounds after leading by eight points to six at half time. The Great Britain tourists have chalked up another midweek win, running out winners by 17 to six. We'll have the second test for you on One World of Sport this Sunday. A full replay for you, New Zealand against Great Britain. We look forward to you joining us then. And from Canterbury, that's the scoreline. Great Britain 17, Canterbury six.